Uh, thank you all for coming uh, to our our strike uh, first. Our, uh, we call it our artificial army. It's it's intended to be uh, a couple seminar series that we have. We're going to be very few of them to try to make them really high quality, and uh, we call it our artificial army. And it's it's meant to be uh, teaching you all how to become better artificial lure fishermen, not not necessarily bait fishermen. We want to be you know teaching people about artificial lure fishing. So this falls right in line with that. It's interpreting your sonar. Um, artificial bait fishing is all centered on finding structure. And the best way to find structure is using your sonar technology. It's pretty complicated, I think, a lot of times. Um, I feel like I'm a pretty bright guy. I've got side scan technology. I sort of think I know what I'm looking at. Uh, I have a lot to learn, and I've already learned a lot from Ben um, in like 15 minutes that we spent together doing it <laughs> on the same boat. I think you're all going to learn a lot. I hope you are. Uh, a couple housekeeping things. If you don't know us, um, Ralph Phelps is a well-known, one of the first few guides in Charleston and like 40 years ago, because I think there was what, three guides in Charleston? And don't forget to tell them I started guiding when I was 10. We used to have megalodons in the water back there. Anyway, uh, about four years ago, we founded this company, I Strike Fishing, and it's based on the premise that predators strike the eye. All of our lures have oversized eyes, and um, probably most of you are familiar with them. Um, we do have a small shop here which is open, and we have a 10% discount on top of our usual discounts, which are pretty steep. Um, you're welcome to, uh, to shop if you want or not, it's up to you. Um, we've got two lovely assistants in there helping us out, uh, my wife Lori and uh, Christina, who's our helper. If you ever, if you ever ordered online from us, Christina's probably packed your order. And uh, you might want to go and say hello. And um, key player, key player. We rely on Christina. She's awesome. And uh, there's two bathrooms in the back. If you didn't find them, um, the back corner is like the the guest one. The other one's for us, uh, swill <laughs> so, um, workers. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, we said welcome you here. I want to introduce our speaker. Captain Ben Powers with Real Time Charter for Real Time Charters. He's out of Folly Beach. He's one of the handful of Shimano Pro Staffers. They are kind of like, uh, you know, it, it's a big deal to become a Shimano Pro Staffer. Family. And their family, and they treat him really well. And you might have seen him on these uh, social media contests that they have with their some of their Pro Staffers. Pretty cool. And um, he's also a commercial oysterman, right? Yeah. Grew up. Uh, our problem guy, yeah, he's, he started out commercial oystering, became a guide, uh, and I'm happy to know him, and I'm happy he came here to help us out. Has really figured out his uh, sonar, and he's got a lot to learn, and, or we have a lot to learn from him, but the, I want to kind of set the ground rules. I don't think, like, I want this to be interactive. I want you all to learn, and I want us to be asking questions. And I think a lot of the slides are more or less pictures, and we're going to talk about them and um, talk about some of the technologies and changes. And we had an interesting day last week. We took my boat and his boat and passed by the same structure and took images of the same thing with our two. I have Simrad. He's got um, hummingbird and. Um, it was quite eye-opening. No, and, and we have those images yeah, side so by side. Yeah. About. So without further ado, uh, Ben Powers, let's welcome him. I just want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, I'm really excited to share this with you guys. Uh, it's not something that's really talked about much in the saltwater world. Uh, it's becoming more popular in the saltwater industry. Uh, it's been around in the freshwater and uh, commercial usage for a long time. Uh, as far as the side imaging and the down imaging. Um, every, most people are familiar with the 2D, uh, still want to learn about it, and there's a lot to learn about it. Uh, you know, you don't just turn it on and expect to get a great image. It, it doesn't work that way. 
Uh, but what we will focus on today, uh, I've been using this technology now for probably about a year. So, you know, this isn't something I've been using my whole life. Uh, I grew up fishing with bait out of John boats and uh, slowly worked my way up. And the technology uh, that I have been able to take on the past few years has really advanced uh, my catch. So we'll start out with 2D uh, imaging. So we've got 2D down imaging, side imaging, and then something I also want to talk about uh, toward the end of one boat network, um, you know, tying in all that technology and being able to use it together as one, which is huge to me. So the 2D imaging uh, is a great tool, uh, something that I use when, I, when I'm looking for stuff underneath me, because I'm not, you're not seeing things that are going to be on either side of you. Uh, so you can also, with the 2D imaging, there's a lot of fine tuning to be done within that. And this is just a basic picture that I took at one of our local reefs. I don't have a lot of screenshots of 2D because it's something that I've used my whole life. I never really thought that it was a huge deal. Uh, so I've got a lot more screenshots for the down imaging and the side imaging. But this shows uh, a great time on the boat here. So. Over here, we've got the 2D imaging on the right. Um, I've got my map over on the left. So these are different waypoints where I've found uh, either nice schools of fish or pieces of structure that were holding fish. Uh, as you can see, I'm in 41 feet of water. Uh, and what I'm on here, these are sheep's head. So what you see over to the right underneath, uh, you can see the fish kind of elevated up off the top there. Uh, those are the sheep's head coming up toward the fiddler crab. And uh, the fish underneath are going to be the sea bass. So the sheep's head are kind of taking over the sea bass. The sea bass tend to hang really tight to the bottom. Uh, the sheep's head will sometimes take over the sea bass and push them out. And so that's what you're seeing here is this fish coming up off the top. Uh, and then just under my mark there, my arrow key, you can see another fish up above. But one important thing with this image is that I have, as you can see on the right, I have the whole water column listed. And so one thing that you can do uh, on most newer units, and we talked about this at the jigging seminar uh, at Shimano, is that you can zoom in on, like if you're focusing on bottom fishing, you're not necessarily looking at that first, you know, 50% of the water column. You're focused on that bottom part of the water column, down deep, right along the bottom. So you can actually zoom in uh, on your screen to the bottom, you know, to the bottom 10 feet, and you get a much clearer image of what you're looking at. So like right here, it's zoomed way out. So I'm not seeing as much detail, but if you zoom way in and zoom in on, on that 30 to 41 foot, you can see the different sizes in the fish and you'll see, you'll notice, you know, as you're catching fish, you say, okay, I'm catching sea bass. And then you look at your screen and you see those smaller marks on there, you know, and you're like, okay, those are sea bass. And you remember that, you remember that image. So next time you move to a spot and you're not looking for sea bass and you zoom in and you see those sea bass, you're like, nope, looking for a different mark. And so what I'll do is I'll zoom in on that bottom 25 to 30%, depending on what I'm fishing for, that bottom 25% of the water column. And that'll give me a clear image of what I'm looking at as far as the size of the fish. Because just like anything, when you zoom in, you can get a better idea of what you're looking at. <laughs> so that's a, a huge pointer there uh, on the 2D. Uh, another thing that a lot of folks don't realize that I just learned over the past year is that just like with the down imaging and the side imaging, there's fine tuning settings within your 2D. And so if you go to your menu settings, uh, you know, you've got different access points to your settings for you know, each unit, whether it's Garmin or Simrad or Hummingbird or Low Rance. But mine is over on the side, I have a key button that pulls up my menu options. And I can go to different settings for my 2D sonar. And I can change the sensitivity and I can change the contrast and different things like that. Now they're called different things on each unit. Uh, mine is called sensitivity contrast. We usually have two or three basic settings. 
and you can play with those on the 2D just like you can the uh, side scan and the down and that will help you get a much better image and it's very simple and very easy to do once you figure it out. Uh, you can just pull up your manual and see how you access those settings uh, within your 2D and you can go on and, vi and visibly change those settings and so that you're manually seeing different pictures. So I, what I'll do on my unit, uh, each unit's different, but I'll pause it and I'll go on there and I'll change the settings and it'll actually change the current picture I'm looking at until I get what I'm looking for. And then I'll hit play and I'll get it rescanning again. And so make sure that, you know, just because it's too basic 2D imaging, and you're not getting the picture you're looking for, don't give up, you know, you can't just turn it on, like I said, and expect to get that image. Go into those settings and fine tune it, just like we will talk about later when we get to the side and the down imaging. Um, another thing uh, with any, any imaging, there's two basic things that I always try to focus on, and that's making sure the boat is level uh, oftentimes you don't realize, but you've got a lot of weight to one side of the boat. The boat may be leaning. You're not getting the proper reading that you should get uh, if it's level. Because when you mount that transducer, you're mounting it level. That's the whole goal. You know, you want to get a nice, clear image. So if the boat is sitting like this, what image do you expect to get? You're going to be looking over here or over here. You're going to make sure, you know, if the boat's not level, I say, hey, buddy, you know, move over to the right or move over to the left for me. Make sure that boat's balanced out so that you get a good, clear image of where you're looking at. Another thing is uh, I've noticed over the past few months as I've begun to pay attention to the real small detail, going with the tide, I seem to get a better image uh, than going against the tide. Now, that may be different on different transducers and different units. I use Hummingbird, like I said. Uh, so just pay attention to that. When you're out there and you're fishing and you're riding along and you're like, I don't like this image I'm getting, turn and come back the other way uh, and come with the tide or against the tide and see if that changes your image at all. Uh, so like I said, level, making sure the boat's level and paying attention to current are two big things in 2D, down imaging, and side imaging. So next we're going to talk about what we got next. We got starting with down imaging. So down imaging is very neat. Uh, it's not something I use a lot inshore because I'm not fishing a lot of deep water. Uh, down imaging is when you're looking for fish uh, under you. Most of the time I'm fishing water 12 feet and less. You can still use the down imaging. Uh, in 12 feet or less, but I find that the side imaging is a lot more effective in the, uh, sorry, I keep pressing buttons all over the place to get myself. But this is a down imaging shot. Uh, I really like this one because it shows a couple different scenarios that I can talk about and point out. Uh, one other thing that I just forgot about that I want to mention, uh, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to think of things. But on one other thing that you want to pay attention to with your 2D imaging is your um, kilohertz. If you have it set at a real low setting, like on 80, that's way too low. You need to crank it up. Like on newer units, on my unit, uh, with my 2D imaging, it'll have like a, it'll scan. So as I get into different water columns and different depths, it'll go from 150 to 220, but make sure that you're around that 200 mark uh, for the sub, for the 2D imaging. If you're too low, um, you won't get that clear reading that you're looking for because that's uh, like if you have 80 kilohertz, that's something I would use for sword fishing. Like if I was in 600 feet or deeper and I really wanted to get that widespread image, uh, that's what you would use that for. So pay attention because uh, when I used to use Ray Marine. When I turned that unit on initially, it wasn't on that setting and it really screwed me up at first. So make sure that you're around that 200 kilohertz mark uh, when you're anywhere from zero to 600 feet. What's up there? That kilohertz has to do with the beam width? The yes, width? the beam width and uh, the clarity as well. Yep. So 
here I've got it on, it's, it, it bound, like I said, it bounces between 150 and 200. Uh, but that's a newer technology. If you have a unit that's a little bit older, it'll probably be fixed on one setting. Uh, so that's just another thing I wanted to mention there with 2D. They made all the 2D with the A scope. Any reason? What do you use the A scope for? I see it's all over there on the far right. The A scope, the little bar down the side. Oh, I don't. You know, I don't use it. I leave it on because I, I pay attention to it, and I want to. You know, if, I, yeah. if there is a difference that I want to notice, I want it to be there so I can see it. Uh, Great question. Does anybody, before I move on to down imaging, does anybody have a question on what I've talked about uh, with 2D? Pretty good. You see, like, the 200 hertz at roll foot and less or 500 foot and less? No, zero to anything that you're going to be fishing in uh, in a smaller vessel. Zero to 600 feet, uh, you want to make sure that you're anywhere between 150 and 200. <clears throat> All right, so down imaging. In short, uh, one thing I will say about the down imaging and the side imaging, uh, I have not had a great opportunity to use this a lot at the near shore. Uh, so I do plan on talking about that in the future. But uh, I've most of what I've gotten good with, with the down and side imaging is inshore. So we're gonna be focusing on inshore structures mainly inside the inlet. Uh, and I do plan on getting better at the reef with it, but I don't feel comfortable yet uh, providing you guys with great knowledge on that. So we'll be focusing inshore on the down and side imaging. What I have here is I'm trying to cat, I'm looking for menhaden. Uh, I saw bait fish popping in the deep water so I wanted to try and get on those menhaden. Right when they first showed up, they were all spread out in tiny little balls. I really wanted to get some for what we were doing. So I saw this small patch of bait here under my boat. I was trying to net it. And as you can see, I've got, I've got my settings set. I've got my contrast way up. I've got my sensitivity way up. Uh, most of the time when I'm working the down imaging or the side imaging, my contrast and my sensitivity are usually pretty high. So here we've got the rope, you've got the weights around the net, you've got that small school of bait that I just barely missed there. Uh, those are menhaden. And you can see the individual fish there. Uh, so very cool image. I, I like the down imaging. I use it more for bait inshore than I do uh, fish. But as you get over like the jetties and things like that, it can become very effective for finding those redfish and those uh, trout off of the rocks, sitting on the sand, because you can get over top of them and see them elevated up off the bottom. And so the nice thing about the down imaging is as you can see, like if I pulled this up on my 2D, it would be a blur. There, you wouldn't see the space underneath that image. And with this, you can see the water column underneath my net very clearly. You can tell at the exact depth that object's at, and uh, it gives a very clear image. All the images that I have up here uh, I've taken off my boat here in town uh, with our water clarity. Uh, I have noticed the water, I get this question a lot, the water clarity does not really play a big factor. Um, don't let it fool you. I, I don't have a lot of trouble with it. Uh, you know, I'm marking fish in real shallow water, real muddy water on that low outgoing tide, and I notice no difference than uh, if that you had that nice green clean water. So the the down imaging. So the down imaging, what I've got here, I paused it to get that picture. That's why the screen is broken on the bottom. I was I was right on a ledge. This was right in the Cooper River. So we were right on the ledge. Uh, it dropped from like 20 feet down to 40 feet, and that that bait was flowing right in on that tide line. So that's what you see there. I paused it and replayed it. That's why it jumped up. Did you get them? No, I missed them. You can see, that's what I'm talking about. You can see how I actually missed the bait. So that's and one this, underneath it there? No, the ones underneath it are, that's probably smaller, smaller stuff. You can tell. See how that pot of bait above the net is rounded out? It's much brighter, it's denser. So anytime you got down imaging or side imaging, the brighter an object is, the denser it's gonna be, uh, the heavier of a shadow it's gonna cast. So that's something to pay attention to. Uh, but yeah, no, I missed those, unfortunately. 
Uh, any questions about the down imaging? They, they play, the down imaging and the side imaging are very similar as far as the settings. So as we get into the settings on the side imaging, uh, you can pay attention to that and, and use that uh, for your down imaging. Like I said, I don't use it a lot inshore. I've found the side imaging to be a little bit more effective, so we'll talk a lot more about it. Uh, but does anybody have any questions about their down imaging? That is a vertical slice down yes. into the water. Yes. Just, just like. Just like 2D. Just you're like getting it. Yes, you're getting the same image that you would uh, for your 2D as you would your down imaging. Same. Cone, same everything. Yep. Just different, different technology. Are there other specific? Uh, you, you mentioned the sensitivity for down imaging. Are there other kind of settings that you that the contrast? That are, con well, it depends on your unit, you know, and that's that's what we all have to realize. We're all using different units. Each setting is going to be called something different, but it's going to do the same thing. It's just like a, a digital camera or a, a laptop. You know, they all have the same, you know, the same style. The same. They do. They all do the same thing. They just look different. They're set up different. But to get kind of what you're getting there, those are really the only two kind of things you're changing. I'm changing contrast and sensitivity. I don't mess with my chart speed much. I get that question a lot as well. What What do you do with your chart speed? I leave my charts chart speed on the basic setting, kind of dead in the center. Uh, because when I'm getting these images, as you can see, I'm doing 1.3 miles an hour here. As we go through all the side imaging pictures, you'll notice that I'm never getting over four and a half miles an hour, five hour, five miles an hour max. Otherwise, that image becomes a little bit, uh, I guess you could say, blurred. Uh, but when you do crank up your speed, if you find that you can't slow down without creating a bunch of cavitation under your boat, uh, bump up that chart speed a little bit. I have found where I will need to do that sometimes. I can come in the walk through cut and it's just ripping through there and I've got all that gnarly structure that I'm looking at. I'll bump that chart speed up a notch or two, but you should never have to crank it all the way up. That down imaging, you using that for bait and say deep hole? Yes. Oh yeah, no, very much so for the deep hole shrimp, uh, but also for menhaden. Like menhaden in deeper water when you're not seeing them on the surface, I'll have my down imaging and my side imaging up next to each other. And you, once you learn how to watch each, and you so as soon as you see the bait on your down imaging, it'll tell you what depth it's at. And then the side imaging will tell you what side of the boat it's on. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're looking at your side imaging next to your down imaging, and on the down imaging, the bait comes under the boat, which side of the boat it's on, that can make a big difference, you know, if it's not a big school of bait. So then you look at your side imaging, and you got this, the boat is in the center, and you'll see, it'll tell you what side of that boat it's on, and that's, that helps me a ton. Because oftentimes you throw it off one side, and the bait, five seconds later, you are pop, right on the other side of the boat. And then you're like, oh boy. So that's uh, definitely something that I do a lot when finding bait, in deeper water especially. Because those menhaden don't always come to the surface. If I'm out there early in the morning, and you know they're like out around that between Fort Sumter and the lighthouse, you know they're there somewhere. You just, if it's pitch black, dark, two, three o'clock in the morning, I'll just ride with that imaging on, and you'll find them and throw right on them and never hear them. Are you using your trolling motor for that speed or your boat motor? Uh, both. Um, either either or whichever one I need to do to achieve that speed with the least amount of cavitation. Uh, I find that with the trolling motor, sometimes it can disturb the image a little bit uh, because it's in the bow of the boat and you're, you know that water is going up under the boat and creating cavitation. Uh, but as long as it's not cranked up and you're keeping it down and then, you know, keeping that cavitation to a minimum, uh, you can still get a great image with your, your trolling motor. And we'll get to that. You'll see where I'm using my trolling motor from my unit. Is your transducer through or or No, no. You, you cannot get uh, the side imaging with the through hole because you have to have that transducer off the back of the boat being able to get that shot. So if your transducer is on the back of your boat, you want to make sure you, what you need to keep in your mind 
is that you know as soon as you see whatever you see come across the screen, you know that right there off the back of your boat, that's that's right where you're seeing it. You know, it's not off the bow, it's not 10 feet back, it's right where that transducer is. And then you use that as a point on the bank or whatever you're looking at. And uh, as we get forward, different units will uh, show you different settings, like down here on the bottom. You can see where it tells me different uh, options that we'll get into there later. So the side imaging, my secret weapon. Uh, this is something I've started to use over the past year, like I said, very heavily. Uh, I started actively finding big schools of fish uh, last, late last fall. Uh, once they all started to school back up, the reds were coming back into very large numbers. Uh, sometimes they get pushed down into that deeper water. But uh, even now with the water temperature up to, as you can see here, 80 degrees, and uh, the other day I was finding them in 10 feet of water and 84 degrees. And so they're still down, they're still holding under those docks. Uh, and they're there and they're still in big numbers. So don't let them fool you. Uh, there's a lot going on in this image. Uh, this is this is a great image. It's very zoomed out. Uh, one thing that you want to pay attention to here is uh, my key focus, as you can see here, is on the right. Uh, that's where my pilings are. That's where my dock, uh, docks are. And over to the left, um, those cuts in the mud, you can see it starts to get um, a little bit darker as you get away from the boat. Uh, that's because it's shallowing up. It gets very shallow over to the left side here. Um, it's probably, <coughs> once you get all the way to the end here, you're probably in a foot of water, two feet of water. Um, as you can see here, I'm in 9.2 feet. And actually those marks that you see in the bottom there, those are prop marks from people passing through the creek and hitting the bottom. So that's what those marks you see in there in the bottom are. Um, this image on the right, uh, to the top right, uh, is a school of redfish. Um, as you guys can see, it's a lot. You know, it's not just a few fish. And I'm sorry, point it up. Yes, sir, I, I'm really bummed. I didn't even think about this. I have a laser, but it doesn't work on the screen. <laughs> so uh, you've got um, I'm sure about a long object. Hey, yeah, well, yeah, a long object. <laughs> so, all <I'll know>, right, <laughs> I always try, like, normally when you're doing side imaging, you're focusing on one structure. You're like, all right, I've caught fish here before. I, I know there's some fish around this area. Be careful with this. This is a one of a kind, Les Phillips. Uh, so this here is the school of fish. These dark spots. Fish are always going to show up uh, as dark shadows most of the time. Uh, these black marks that you see. I've noticed with, and, and you can mark small fish. I've marked schools of trout, schools of slot redfish, uh, it, it does mark small fish as well. Uh, and I have friends that guide up on the lake um, that we can maybe pull back up later that have gotten images of crappie on the trees. Crappie, crappie, how do you like part of the water column is 25 foot? So, what we've got going on here, one thing I want to mention is I'm focused on the right side uh, because my transducer is on the right side of my boat. So I'm going to get a better image looking out to the right with the transducer on the right side of my boat because there's no obstructions. When, the, when I'm looking to my left, and you'll see I do get great images on the left as well, but when, I, when, it's on, when I'm looking to the left, you've got your lower unit of your motor and that cavitation that it's creating, uh, you know, creating some disturbance. And so that's one thing that you want to focus on. Uh, if your transducer is on the right side of your boat, you want to try to work along that right side. Now I have settings in my unit here to where I can go on and focus only on the right and get nothing but right imaging and it will put all of that energy into the right side of the boat and you will get a better image. So if, if you're focusing on one bank, you try to mess with those settings and, and focus on that one side. Don't pay attention over here to the left. What um, would be the horizontal dark lines? Set here uh, on the right side. Those are pilings. So those are uh, dock pilings. It's a shadow. And there, 
that's the shadow that it's casting. So when you have a side imaging picture, you're looking at, you're like, what am I looking at? To me, when I look at this now, I just, I see it. So what you want to do is you want to stand on the bottom, right? Imagine yourself standing on the bottom of the tree. And you're in nine feet of water, and you took a flashlight, and you shine that flashlight down the bottom of the river. And what's that flashlight going to do? It's going to cast shadows, right? So if you were standing on the bottom of the river, right here underneath your boat, and you cast it, you shine that flashlight this way, you're marking objects, and then therefore marking their shadows. And the shadows are what's going to give them away. So that's the best way uh, I can describe. Does that make sense to everybody? So these images that I'm getting, these are the shadows of the image. So what you're looking at is where you want to pay attention to is at the base of